it's Rebel Jigo. So, a number of people have asked about our general camp setup. So this is going to be a quick episode on how we generally set up our campsite and the sort of basics and the things that we think are important. Number one, choosing a site. So, what do we prefer? We like shade. Shade is very important. That's probably one of the first things or the very first criteria that we will look at when looking for a campsite. We do like a little bit of seclusion, so preferably not amongst the crowds, if that's possible. That's not always possible, but that is the preference as well. If we're in a national park, for example, and there are sites along the fence, then we will sacrifice shade for the site along the fence. But in any case, we will almost always camp along the periphery of the campsite, even though that means walking a bit further to washing stations and ablutions and so on. But it's just nicer to be away from the, the bigger crowds and the more noise and the more light, especially at night. Next thing is slope. So we like to use the ground tent. In fact, we use the ground tent 95% of the time, if not more. It's not often that we use the rooftop tent. And so slope is important. It's important to be somewhere level. Speaking of slope, the position within the campsite height-wise is also important. You generally don't want to be on the lower side of the camp because if it rains, then the water tends to drain in that direction, especially if they aren't proper drainage channels set up. So we like to, if we can, be somewhere where we're away from the water drainage. Now, because we are not early morning risers, that, you know, worms and birds and all that sort of stuff, we like to set up our campsite such that we have morning shade rather than afternoon shade. So we will get up relatively late in the morning compared to most campers. And then we will spend the entire day out and usually come back at six o'clock or whenever the gates close. And so for us, midday and afternoon sun is not really an issue. It's morning sun that we try to avoid. And so one of the first things that we will do is when we get to the campsite and we've chosen a nice campsite and it's shady and it's nice and flat is we will pull out the compass and determine where the sun's going to come up and then set up our tent in a, in a fashion to, to give us the best advantage of the shade. Of course, if you've got a concrete plinth like this here, then that may influence as well where we set it up. But a lot of the time we're looking for that morning shade. Now that we've determined where our site is, and where we're going to put the tent because that's kind of the central feature of the site or the most permanent thing everything else can move around that including the car then we start pulling stuff out uh, to set up our camping site and almost always the first thing that we're going to do is the tent itself which you may have seen on many of the videos what goes in the tent mattresses uh, we prefer memory foam mattresses as opposed to blow-up mattresses for example because blow-up mattresses always leak. I've had five or six blow-up mattresses, different types, different specs, different prices from cheap to quite expensive and they always leak. It may not leak on the first day but they will eventually leak and you'll eventually end up having to pump up your mattress at 3 a.m. or whatever the time is because you're practically on the floor again. Memory foam mattresses are also surprisingly quite comfortable, so they're quite firm, even though they're not very thick. So the mattresses we have are about 50 or 60 millimeters thick, I think, and they're actually really comfortable. Prefer not to have a stretcher. I suppose you could have a stretcher. Some people do like stretchers. The nice thing about stretchers is that it's off the ground, which means that you can stuff things underneath it, like your shoes and so on. So it does give you a bit more space in the tent, actually, to have a stretcher. Stretchers are a bit cold though because you're off the ground. So if you have a stretcher, you do want to put some padding on the stretcher so that you have some warmth underneath you. So we have sleeping bags as well. We don't sleep in the sleeping bags. We actually open the sleeping bags up, zip them together and put that on top of the mattresses. And that's just a really nice, soft, comfortable material to sleep on as opposed to sleeping on the mattresses. So yes, in a cinch, if it's really cold or really cold and windy then we could use the sleeping bags as well but that is the exception rather than the rule most places that you're going to camp in South Africa and Southern Africa and probably Africa in general are not that cold unless you're at really high altitude which can be the case from time to time but again it's the exception rather than the rule so most of the time the sleeping bags provide a nice soft base on which to sleep 
Having a canvas tent, of course, does make it a little bit warmer and it certainly does prevent you from having wind come through the tent, which could be the case with the poly tent, for example. So check out my review of this canvas tent, both the long-term review and the initial review as well. I think there's some good information on there. So if you've got a poly tent, then you may have to have your bedding a little bit warmer, but it's not a big thing. I think it really depends on where you're camping, but of course the canvas tent is nice for that sort of thing. We have a light inside our tent, which is a little hanging light, and that is both a light and a bug eliminator as well. So that's really nice to have. I do recommend one of those. It doesn't take up a lot of space. In fact, it takes up almost no space, and it is rechargeable as well. We try not to use batteries for a couple of reasons. One is that over time, it's just more expensive to buy batteries than to buy something that's rechargeable in the first place. And of course, every time you throw away a set of batteries, you're disposing of hazardous waste. So we try to avoid that. We have a set of bungee cords in our tent as well. And we hang our towels on those. That's nice because then you've got your wet towel in the tent. It's not flapping around outside. It's not getting dusty if you're in a dusty place. So that's really just a practical thing to do to hang stuff in the tent if you want to. So that's, that's kind of it for the tent. You know, it's really a basic setup. And then we'll put our clothing bags inside there as well. And we always have this nice little table here, which is very convenient, both inside the tent and outside the tent. Okay, so the rest of our campsite now external to the tent. Chairs, of course, really important. Do not go camping without your chairs. It's going to be very uncomfortable. Very few campsites have chairs and benches, or benches and tables rather. So we always have chairs with us. We will always have at least one chair each and sometimes we'll have a third chair which is extra for whatever reason. We have a camping table as well and I think that's essential on most campsites. There's very few campsites where you get a table with your camping area. It does happen but it's not the rule I would say it's a bit more the exception and that's an essential space to have because you're going to prepare your food on there, you're going to put stuff on there like your kettle and your cups when you're not using them and all kinds of things. And a table is really just a nice space to have that you can keep stuff elevated from the ground as well. So the next thing is an extension cord, electrical extension cord. And a roll up one is preferable. Of course, if you have just an extension cord, it takes up a bit less space in the car because it's, you know, it's a smaller package and it's more malleable. Uh, I like a roll up one though because it is kind of easy to walk around and transport around and plonk on the floor and then plug your stuff into it without it being on the ground. But it's a matter of preference. You do sacrifice a bit of space for that, but I do prefer it. I would recommend that you have at least 25 meters. You can have a shorter cord or set of cords. You can join them together. Joining them is also not really great because sometimes it rains and you've got to worry about where you've got the cords joined together and that sort of thing and, and kicking them because they're lying on the ground and so on. So I think have a, a, an extension cord that's at least 25 meters long because sometimes the electrical points are a significant distance away from your campsite or where you need the electricity. So my recommendation is 25 meters at least. So we actually have a 30 meter cable and it is a heavy duty cable as well. And the reason for that, it's not so much about the current because we're never using that much current. The reason for that is that sometimes you've got to run your cable across a road, like in the campsite that we're in now, where the plug point is across the road, so cars are driving over that cable. So it's good to have a cable that's slightly thicker and can take a bit more punishment. Next is the price down. And our charcoal chimney. So those are two essential things to have on your campsite. A lot of the time, there is a bry stand. In fact, most times there's a bry stand. We prefer to have our own little bry for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it is a closed bry, so it gives you a few more options brying wise and, and preparing food. Secondly, it's a lot more efficient. So this uses a lot less coals than an open bry stand. Some people like wood, in which case an open bry stand is great. It's, it's you know, much more practical for wood in that case. Also, of course, we don't always know exactly where we're going to be camping. So once in a while, if you're wild camping, for example, then you want to have a bry like this with you, which is small, quite portable. This is a Weber Go Anywhere bry. It's actually a fantastic piece of kit. It's expensive, I will say. However, I think we've gotten really good value out of it. And then we have our charcoal chimney, which is then our charcoal starter, if you want to call it that. You can, of course, start your charcoal in the bry as well. It just takes a lot longer. 
The nice thing about having that is that it's much quicker and while you're brying, if your charcoal runs down, you can prepare more on the side. This charcoal chimney has saved us a lot of time. We often get started a bit late because we tend to come in right at the end of the day, just before the gates close, you know, sort of two or three minutes before the gates close often. Never late, but two or three minutes before the gates close. And that there saves a lot of time. And I think over the time we've been camping, it, you know, if you accumulate all of that time, it is quite significant. That is great value. Of course, you can make one as well yourself, but buy it, it's fantastic. It's a Weber product and it works really well. So these things do take up a bit more space in your vehicle. And we are very space conscious because we do not have a trailer. We prefer not to camp with a trailer. We prefer not to travel with a trailer because it's a bit of a hindrance from time to time. And you've got to reverse it into bays and stuff and difficult. So we, we don't have a trailer. So this does take up a little bit more space in the vehicle and we're very space conscious. So it's actually not that much space. I think it's good value for it. Something that we always have out when we're in the campsite is this little table over here. This is fantastic. This is a little fold up table. So it folds up pretty much into a square that big, that big and that thick. And it takes up no space in the car. I mean, you, you hardly know that it's there. This is really nice to have because you can put your coffee on here, you can put your tea on here, you can put your plate on here, you can put your food on there in your plate, of course. You can put your camera on there, you can put your flask on there. It's really a, a really valuable piece of kit to have. And because it's really small, you can put it in the tent as well. So at night, you go to sleep, you're charging your devices and your cell phone or whatever else. You put this inside the tent and you put your stuff on there to charge at night and you can keep it outside the tent as well. If you're worried about scorpions, that sort of thing, you don't want to put your shoes on the ground outside the tent. If you keep your shoes outside the tent, then you can put your shoes on top of this little table. So this is a really fantastic piece of kit to have for camping. Cameras, very important. If you didn't catch it on camera, then it didn't happen. So we have a rule, ABC, which is always be carrying. So I'll take the camera everywhere. If I'm walking around the campsite, I'll have the camera with me because you never know what you're going to see and take a picture of it. It's nice. It's a nice memory to have. And of course, for birds as well. So we're big on birding. And so the bird book is also important. Always have these two things on you. In the northern Kruger, for example, where we are now filming this year, the birding is absolutely fantastic. So this is for us essential kit as well. So an electric kettle is I think really important to have. You can have a fire kettle. We do have a typical kettle that you put on a gas stove or on the fire, whatever the case is. But obviously this saves you a lot of time. It's just really easy to make hot water in an electric kettle as opposed to putting it on a fire and waiting for it. We carry this around. I think it's a great little addition to our camping setup. A steel one is good as well because you know it can bounce around in the car and bang about, especially when you're going over corrugated dirt road and that sort of thing. So electric kettle. The big bag is nice to have because you can carry all your stuff in a bag. Now, you can also put all your picnic stuff in a picnic basket or whatever the case is. The nice thing about a bag is that it's easy to carry around. So if you're going to go somewhere, then you have a bag as well, which is easier to carry around than a basket, for example. What's in the picnic bag? A couple of plates very important and that is plates for eating as well as a couple of bowls that we use for breakfast for example and then we keep a couple of double walled steel mugs in there which are really nice to have double wall steel mugs keeps your stuff hot when you want it hot like coffee and tea and of course keeps your stuff cold when you want it to stay cold so i really do recommend those as well that's a really nice thing to have when you're camping we also have a set of glasses in there knives forks the usual cutlery and stuff as well very convenient, a set of cloths as well, so kitchen cloths and also a set of oven gloves because hot stuff like fries and that sort of thing. And our tea as well stays in there, so a little sealed container for tea bags and a little nice sealed container for ground coffee as well. Ah, and there's also a cutting board in there, which is nice to have because sometimes you need the cutting board to cut stuff on and you don't want to cut it on just any surface. You want it to be on a surface that you can keep clean and dedicated to cutting your food. We also have a two-plate gas stove. Now, we never used to have a two-plate gas stove. We always just had the canister with one of those screw-on type plates on top of the gas canister. We would never have bought a two-plate stove. However, now we have a two-plate gas stove, which we got with the car when we purchased the car. 
and it's actually turned out to be really nice to have and I don't think I would ever go back to not having a two plate gas stove. The nice thing about that there is not only is it quick and easy to prepare food so you want to do breakfast for example you don't want to start up the fire and have the charcoal going etc you just connect the gas and then you switch on your gas stove and you can start making your eggs or whatever the case is. Also when you stop on the roadside to have lunch or if you stop at a picnic site to have lunch or if you're around like the Kruger Park like we are now and you go to one of the picnic sites and you want to make your lunch or just warm up your food then you've got your gas stove. Gas canister, gas stove and you're set up in a minute and you can get stuff frying and heating up and that sort of thing. Of course as well if you don't have electricity and you want hot water then you just put your kettle on your gas stove. So the nice thing about having two plates is that you can do multiple things at the same time. You can heat up water while making eggs. You can make eggs while frying something uh, on the other plate, etc. So I would not go back to a single plate stove. I definitely recommend that you have a two plate one. It takes up very little space in the car. It's rectangular, so it's a regular shape that kind of fits or slots into a place in the car. You know, you're not going to have difficulty finding a place to slot it in the car. So I, I really do recommend that. And then we normally have a two box system. We have a, what we call a toxics box and we have what we call a kitchen box. The toxics box has all our toxic stuff in it. So it has cleaning uh, stuff, sunlight, liquid, uh, soap, dishwasher soap. It has charcoal in it, it has fire lighter in it, it has mosquito repellent in it, it has bug spray in it. It has all the things that you don't want to be next to your food or your food related stuff. And then we have a kitchen box. And in the kitchen box, we put all the food stuff like cans and drinks maybe, and kitchen towels and extra cups and plates if you want to have extra cups and plates and popcorn and stuff like that there. And that's just really convenient because when you get to camp, you can then pull the whole box out and put it down next to your chair and have easy access to your toxic box or easy access to your kitchen box and that sort of thing. So that works really well. We do however now have the advantage of a big draw system or a big draw inside the Land Cruiser. And so now a lot of our kitchen stuff kind of goes into that drawer, pots and pans and drinks and etc etc and spices and so on. So that's kind of replaced the kitchen box to some extent. The kitchen box is nice to have we use it a lot less these days but it is nice to have because you can put it next to you and having a box next to you means you have another surface another table so to speak on which you can put stuff so if we get away on long trips one of our epic end of the year trips for example that's like 6,000 k's or 7,000 k's whatever the case is and you know like three weeks long then we will still take those boxes with us because it's just extra storage space to pack extra stuff that you need for a longer trip and like I said, it's always nice to have that because then you have these extra surfaces in your campsite of which you can plonk stuff as well. And what we call the green lidded box. So, what's in the box? Everything electrical that can fit in the box. So, little cameras, cell phones, cell phone chargers, those uh, battery packs that you use to sell, charge your cell phone, batteries, uh, GoPros, um, little stuff, little electrical stuff that you don't want floating all over the car, all over the campsite. You keep in a box like this here. This is convenient to have as well. Maybe, you know, if you look inside here, you will find in addition to those kinds of things, things like a plastic raincoat, because it rains sometimes, you need a raincoat, um, sunscreen, uh, little torches and stuff like that as well. It's just a nice little space to keep kind of stuff that will float around the car if you don't keep it in one space. So that's kind of our miscellaneous little box in which we keep non-food type stuff. A ground mat. So this goes underneath the tent. In this case, because we have got a concrete slab, we don't need it. But the nice thing about this is obviously it keeps the sand and the mud and the leaves and stuff off your tent. So you don't have to clean your tent as much as you would if you didn't have this. This also kind of makes a nice little porch in front of the tent so that you can walk out of your tent without your shoes on onto a nice surface that is quite clean and then put your shoes on and that sort of stuff. So this is also really nice. This is also one of our camping essentials. And this we take with us everywhere because you can wipe your feet on it. So it's a floor mat. It's a porch in front of the tent. It's a cover for underneath the tent. So those are our camping essentials. That is our basic camping setup. We like to keep it simple. We also only like to travel with the vehicle. 
no trailer. So, space is premium. If it can't fit in the vehicle, it's probably not essential. And if it was essential and it can't fit in the vehicle, it's not coming. So, it's, that's basically it. We have a relatively, well, we have a very simple camping setup, I would say. You know, the only maybe simpler camping setup than this is if you're hiking and camping, you know, then you've just got a backpack. But this is, this is pretty much it, you know, this is how we camp. You can get more elaborate. There are things that are nice to have that I would recommend if you want to spend the money. A solar system is one of them. We've recently purchased a foldable uh, solar system. We haven't reviewed it yet and I will do a review of that when we've used it a few times or when we've used it for a, a, a significant period of time and we can give it an honest actual user review of having that solar system. But we've gone for many years without a solar system and we're camping now. There is electricity but there's no lighting and we would not have used the solar system anyway even if there wasn't electricity. We don't need it but it's nice to have especially if you're going to sit in one site for several days where you're not driving the car around recharging batteries and that sort of thing then it's nice to have a solar system you know then you then you want to recharge your deep cycle battery on your vehicle for example you want to charge your devices your cameras etc and you can't do that because you're not running the car otherwise a solar system is actually a nice to have now although i say that we fit everything in the car it's not entirely true because we do have a roof rack so when we go on a longer trip we have a bit more space on top of the car to store stuff however we have a rooftop tent and that takes up probably two-thirds of the roof rack so there isn't a lot of space left on the roof rack and then we have a second spare tire on top of the roof rack as well and then we have a set of jerry cans on top of the roof rack as well so once you've done all of that you can't really put much more on top of the roof rack but you can put a couple of ammo boxes maybe so you can store a bit more stuff in there if you really need it or if we really need it but we can pretty much fit most of our stuff inside the car before we got the Land Cruiser we only camped with our Nissan Lavina which is a station wagon town city type vehicle and we used to fit everything in there including a cooler box and our toxics box and our kitchen box and our tent and everything that comes along with that the, the mattresses the chairs etc etc tables bry stand little bry column over there everything fit inside there so those are the basics right and i think what i'd like to get across importantly is that you don't have to have an elaborate camping setup to go camping to go places to do stuff to experience things to see everything to go everywhere you can have the basics and that is sufficient and of course budget wise it depends on your budget as well if you've got the budget and you really want to spend a bit more money then you can get a really nice big trailer set up that folds out and does stuff and that's great and and i would love one of those as well one day but i'm really happy with the kind of setup that we have right now and this is sufficient and it's efficient and it's easy to travel anywhere with this kind of setup you, you're not bogged down by lots of stuff and by weight and having to pull a trailer and that sort of thing too cameras very important if you didn't catch it on camera then it didn't happen uh, oh. <laughs> yeah because i'm serious now <laughs> okay let's do it again so tip number one first tip always sit with your stomach in <laughs> so i hope you found this informative i hope you liked the episode please do hit the like button if you did also subscribe and until the next episode Go everywhere, see everything, have a great time.